Welcome to Math is Fundamental. Today we are going to talk about lines and angles, different types of angle relationships. So first what we're going to do is talk about parallel lines. Now you probably already know the term parallel lines, it's when two lines don't intersect. We're going to add on to that definition today and say that we need two lines that are, co two lines that are coplanar that do not intersect. So for example, we have this line and a parallel line. Now we have some options, but the lines have to be coplanar in order to be parallel. So it has to share the same plane. So I could say that this line down here is also parallel to the blue line. Um, I could have also used this line back here because it lies on the top plane with the first line. Those are parallel. Uh, lines that would not have been parallel, even though it might look like it would have been, um, let's say, this line and this line. They look like parallel lines from what we know of parallel lines in the past, but if you look at the blue and the red lines there, they don't share the same planes. They're not coplanar. So we want to make sure to really keep in mind that new part of our definition that the two lines have to be coplanar and no intersections. All right, moving down to perpendicular lines. Perpendicular lines are two lines that intersect to form a right angle. So in order for lines to intersect, it's given that they already have to lie on the same plane. So we don't need to worry about that piece of the definition. We just need to make sure that they intersect at a right angle. So there are two perpendicular lines there. Now new term for us is skew lines. Skew lines are two lines that are not coplanar and do not intersect. For example, I could have this line here that we started with at the top and then I want to think, okay, I can't choose any of the lines that lay on the same plane as that one and I don't want them to intersect. So I could choose that one and let's say this line. Those are two skew lines. They don't share any of the same planes and they not, they're not going to intersect no matter how far they go. All right, parallel planes are two planes that don't intersect. Here I have a few different pairs of parallel planes. And to show which ones, we can just shade them in. So let's just do this side plane here and this side plane here. Those are going to be two parallel planes. All right, uh, last definition for the first table here. We have a transversal, and a transversal is a line that intersects two or more coplanar lines but at different points. For example, if I have two coplanar lines here and here, my transversal is going to be a line that intersects both of those at two different points. So this line here would be my transversal, and I'm just going to mark it with a, a T for transversal. So it's a line that intersects two or more lines at different points. All right, using that definition of transversal, we're going to talk about two uh, types of angles that are formed when we have two or more lines and a transversal. So uh, here we're going to start with corresponding angles, and corresponding angles are two lines, or sorry, two angles that occupy corresponding positions. Corresponding means uh, like the same position. For example, if I have angle one here, then my corresponding angle, if we look at just line T and A here, I have a one is in the upper left corner of our intersections. We have four angles there. We have upper left, upper right, lower left, lower right with that intersection. One is in the upper left. So in order to, for it to correspond, when we come down to the intersection of our transversal T and B, we want the angle in the upper left. It has to be in the same, um, we'll just name it five, in the same corresponding position. So those would be corresponding angles. Uh, another set of corresponding angles would be um, this one, three and seven. We'll name those three and seven. So those would be corresponding angles as well. All right, um, let's see, angle one, 
and I'll write the word and and angle five and then so we want pairs so angle three and angle seven and there are other pairs but I figure a couple examples will do the trick all right next term is alternate interior angles so now we have a couple different things going on here we want two angles on opposite sides of the transversal which gives us the alternate piece of that term and then we want them to be in between the lines A and B. So a um, little vocabulary, this would be our interior of our two lines. It has to be in between those two lines and then alternate means opposite sides of the T, the transversal. So I could have angle one and angle seven would, oops, those would be alternate exterior. Let's try this again. Let's do angle three and angle five would be alternate interior angles because they're on opposite side of the transversal and on the interior. So angle three and angle five. Next term, alternate exterior angles. Again, we want exterior, not interior. So in this case, one and seven would be examples of alternate exterior. Again, they're on opposite sides of that transversal T, and now we're on the exterior of our lines A and B. And angle seven. All right, and last term. Today is a whole bunch of definitions for you. Uh, all right, same side interior angles, or sometimes they're called consecutive interior angles. So just take the, take the term. I like to use same side interior angles same side or same side of the transversal and on the interior so we could do three and six would be same side interior we want the interior of those lines a and b interior and the same side of our transversal t now notice there is no same side exterior angles because we just don't use them in geometry. Um, we can get around to those types of angles using these uh, four main angle relationships that we are given. All right, and no examples for today. We'll see a proof using these in the next lesson. So for today, that about wraps it up. Thanks for watching, and remember, math is fundamental.